There is a forest in the west of Ireland that cannot be found on a map. A man named John runs through these woods. He keeps looking at his watch and repeats that he will bring help. John stops by the sign, thinks for a moment, and continues on his way. He runs for several miles, but as the sun sets, the path leads him to the sign again. A flock of birds flies over John's head, and he realizes he's too late. John wants to save himself and climbs a tree, but the branches break and he falls. A moment later, a mysterious creature appears in front of the victim, and a scream echoes through the forest. John is being dragged underground. At the same time, far away from the mysterious forest, Mina is watching the customer and her boss. She's a pet store clerk. The girl goes out to take a little break, but her boss asks her to come back and get a new task. The boss hands Mina a bird and says the parrot can't talk. Even so, he's welcome at the zoo in a neighboring town. Mina agrees to take the bird, and together with the cage, she goes home. She begins to talk to Pet and says 15 years ago this day, her mom died, and asks Parrot not to die. I'm going out. Try not to die. But Mina is not intimidated by that phrase. In the evening, Mina decides to have some fun. She puts on a dark wig and goes to the bar. Mina meets a guy and tells him a fictitious name. She's lying that she's a ballerina and she's new in town. The next day, at the appointed time, Mina sets off on the road. Girl talks to a parrot in the car to avoid being bored. Mina stops at a gas station and she gets a call from her sister Lucy. She reminds her that the day before was their mother's wake and she was hoping Mina would come. Lucy also tells Mina that it's been 15 years and she just have to let it all go. The car enters the forest path, but Mina doesn't notice it. She thinks about her sister's words and because of this, she goes astray. In the woods, strange things start happening. The phone and radio turn off and after a few more seconds, the car stops. Mina looks around and notices the sign. She decides to find whoever put it up and goes into the woods. Mina takes the bag and a parrot cage with her. Blonde moves not far away from the car, but she gets scared. She decides to go back, but when Mina turns around, the car behind her is gone. The sun sets, and Mina finds herself in the middle of an unfamiliar woods. Suddenly, a flock of birds flies over her, and strange sounds begin to be heard around Mina. The girl notices an old woman with white hair behind the trees. Blonde asks her to stop, but the stranger doesn't answer. Answer. She runs away deep into the woods and Mina has to run after her. The old woman stops only near an unusual house. Woman opens the door and tells the girl that she only has five seconds to get inside. Mina manages to run in and finds herself in a strange room. The old woman closes the door behind her with heavy bolts and turns to her guest to introduce herself and introduce her to the others. My name is Madeline. The girl is Kira and the boy is Daniel. Besides Madeline, that's the old woman's name, there are two other young people living in the house. Madeline calls herself and the residents lost, and Mina will now have to live with them and by their rules. The conversation has to be interrupted. Kira helps Mina up and tells her to do as they say. All four of them line up and turn toward the huge mirrored wall. Madeline explains to Mina that on the other side of the mirror, they are being watched by watchers. They come every night, but they can't go inside. The old woman asks the new girl to take a step forward. Everyone hears applause from outside, the watchers welcome a new victim. All night long, Mina sits without closing her eyes. As soon as the sun rises, she takes the bird and is about to leave. The company tries to stop her, but the girl doesn't listen to anyone and goes in search of her car. Mina notices herself behind the trees and out of fear, she starts to run. But she fails to find a way out, and without strength, the blonde falls to the ground. Madeline finds her again. The old woman says they all tried to escape, but it didn't work. Madeline shows signs that you can't go beyond. They were set up by a professor who studied watchers years ago. If you go beyond these boundaries, there's no turning back. Now they need to get back to the bunker before the sun goes down. In the evening, Kira puts on music and dances near the mirror to please the watchers. The others turn on the TV and watch a tape of an old reality show. In the morning, Kira takes Mina with her and shows herbs and berries to pick. While the girls are out for a walk, Kira says that she has a husband. He left to get help but has not returned yet. Another secret that Kira reveals is the burrows, large craters from which watchers get out at night. At sunset, the group gathers outside the bunker and Madeline repeats the main rules. You must not turn your back to the mirror. You must not open the door to anyone after dark. You must not get close to the dens. And you must always stay in the light. In Madeline's opinion, they are only kept alive because they follow all these rules. At night, everything repeats itself and Mina gets bored. She walks over to the mirror and quietly taps on it a few times. This surprises and angers the watchers. They start knocking back and scaring the residents. The next day, Mina goes hunting with Daniel. Guy admits that he used to get food with John, but now he has to do it alone. He says that Madeline has lived here the longest. She used to teach at the university, and her skills save them from doom. 
Mina thinks that the old woman is fooling everyone and there are no watchers. She convinces Buddy to help her. Daniel holds the rope and Mina climbs down into the watcher's burrow. Deep at the bottom, Mina finds many things that the watchers took from their victims. The girl notices a bicycle among them, which she ties to a rope to lift it up. Unexpectedly, a watcher appears behind Mina's back. The girl calls Daniel for help, and he throws a rope at the last moment. Mina lies to Madeline that they found things near the house. The company hopes the bike will help them escape, and Madeline agrees that they can try. Mina also found the camera, and Daniel sets it up for use. The group puts it near the door to film the watchers. But in the evening, something goes wrong. The watchers don't show up at the appointed time. Instead of them, someone comes to the door and starts knocking. Someone's out there. No one can survive the forest after sunset. This is a trick. Madeline forbids everyone to move and demands that Mina tell the truth. Mina has to admit that she went down into the burrow. Kira recognizes her husband's voice and asks her friends to open the door for him. But Madeline forbids doing so. She assures everyone it's a trick. The old woman scolds Mina for breaking the rules and orders Kira away from the door. To prove that this is a trap, Madeline tells Kira to ask John something that only he can know. Kira asks a question about a book that John knew for sure, but the man can't answer correctly. It becomes obvious that the old woman was right. Everyone looks at the TV screen and sees John's face, which has long since been changed. The watchers find out about the camera and smash it. Madeline hears their anger and orders everyone to take their positions. The creatures try to break the mirrored wall, and the mentor covers the young people with her body. The company manages to survive until morning, and Madeline returns all the things to the burrow. She realizes that Mina will not calm down, and promises to find another way to get out of the woods. Mina remembers her mom and the last day they spent together. Then the family went for a car ride, but Mina threw a tantrum and caused an accident. She thinks about it every day now, all 15 years. Time flies, winter arrives. Mina accepted what was happening. It wasn't easy for the others either. Everyone started getting nervous and fighting over the lack of food. After the events with John, Kira stopped smiling and dancing. And one day she runs away. Mina finds her friend in the woods near a burrow. She asks her to go back to the house, but Kira tries to jump down. The girls are distracted by Daniel's scream, and the friends run back. They find the guy, who got on Madeline to get rid of her. Kira runs after her buddy. Mina stays by Madeline and removes the ropes from her. Daniel locks the door and doesn't let the women inside. The sun goes down and the two stay outside. Madeline and Mina manage to hide in cover. They see the watchers come to the mirrored wall. The masters of the forest turn out to be horrible monsters. Women manage to remain unnoticed. The watchers see that there are only two people in the bunker, so they scatter to find the others. Mina tells Daniel about her sister and manages to persuade him to open the door. All four stand near the mirror to calm the watchers. Madeline tells them that she once wanted to escape, but she met herself. The old woman says that watchers have different names, and one of them is forest fairies. They are able to change their appearance, and they like to study humans to become like them. Turns out it's too late. The creatures don't forgive humans for breaking the rules. They begin to speak in the voices of the victims, but no one believes in the deception anymore. The watchers begin to break down the door, and the company props it up with a table. At the place where the table was, Daniel notices a trapdoor, and everyone decides to go down to escape. The group finds the large laboratory of Professor Kilmartin, who has built a glass house. There are plenty of food supplies stored on the shelves, but Mina is more interested in the computer. She can't send a message from it because there is no internet. Professor forgot to pay the provider. Mina turns on the videos that the scientist recorded. The old man talks about his experiments, which he conducted for almost a year. Kilmartin was able to tame one individual watcher, and they became very close. But after 300 days, the professor's nerves failed, and he left one last message. Kilmartin says he prepared two bullets, one for himself and one for the creature. The tape does not show the moment of elimination, but two shots are heard. Everyone realizes that the professor's plan has succeeded. Mina orders everyone to prepare to escape. On one of the recordings, Kilmartin says where his boat is hidden and how to get to it. The scientist advised to follow the birds. To have a fun last night in a strange house, Kira offers to dance. She's having fun with Daniel. The guy admits he doesn't have a home, then Kira offers to stay with her after they get home. At dawn, the group leaves the bunker. They see that the Watchers have destroyed their house. This gives them courage, and the victims hurry into the woods to find a boat before sunset. The company reaches the final sign, and Mina releases the parrot to lead them out. The bird does fly in the right direction, and the friends hurry after it. At the way out of the forest, the group comes to a huge stone shaft. Madeline says that fairies were once imprisoned beneath it. Legend has it that centuries ago, humans and creatures were friends. 
But the fairies became frightening with their power, and humans locked them underground. The fairies spent many centuries in captivity, but they managed to escape to the surface. Fortunately, they cannot leave this forest and return to the human world. When it starts to get dark, Mina has visions of herself and her sister. Madeline assures her that it is a trick and hurries her friends, who are already being chased by the Watchers. The company finds the lake and spots a boat. Everyone rushes to it and only Daniel stays in the woods. He hears John's voice and goes back to help him. They do not manage to save their friend. John turns into a watcher and hugs an old friend. Hundreds of monster fairies gather on the shore, but the trio manage to get away in time. Mina wakes up from the rays of the sun and realizes that they are saved. She wakes up her friends and the group goes out onto the road where a tourist bus picks them up. Now everything is over and women can move on with their lives in peace. At home, Mina takes a shower and remembers everything that happened to her on the day of the terrible accident. The next day, the girl goes to the university to destroy all of Professor Kilmartin's documents. He asked to do this on one of the videos so that no one else would look for fairies. Mina pretends to be the professor's niece and is allowed into his office. She carefully examines the scientist's office, finds many documents and reports that have information about fairies. Mina also notices an ancient tapestry that depicts fairies along with humans. What attracts the girl's attention most is a stack of photographs. She picks them up and goes to Kira. Mina shows her friend pictures of Kilmartin and his wife, Madeline. But beyond that, the girl found an obituary in the office that had been written when the woman passed away. The girl has figured out the secret. Madeline is also a watcher, but she was different from the others. She could go out into the light and leave the forest. A car pulls up to the house. Mina realizes she's trapped. It wasn't the real Kira in the house, but Madeline. Madeline turns into John and knocks off the real Kira. After that, she grabs Mina and sends her into the wall as well. The old woman, who takes on different forms, confesses that she wants to get Mina's body and live among people. Madeline takes on the appearance of a blonde and attacks. She is about to destroy the girl, but the real Mina reveals a secret to the old woman. Madeline not a real fairy, she's a half-blood. Mina reminds Madeline how she took care of them in the forest. She suggests that the fairy can keep her goodness and go in search of similar half-breeds. The victim's words have an effect on Madeline, and she lets Mina go. Fairy flies away, keeping the girls alive. Kira comes to her senses, and Mina assures her that it's definitely over now. A few days later, Mina arrives at her sister's house and tells her everything that has happened. Lucy assures the twin that it's all behind her. But Mina is sure that Madeline takes on different forms and watches her. While the sisters chat, Mina's parrot looks out the window. There, in the middle of the street, stands a little red-haired girl who watches sisters. 